Something interesting is happening in the world of bug bounty, and yes, it is 2025, which means it unfortunately has to do with AI. It all has to do with this article written by Daniel Stenberg, Death by a Thousand Slops. Now, if you don't know, Daniel Stenberg is one of the seven maintainers. He is the core maintainer of curl, the command line utility in Linux used to do web requests. Now, Curl, Curl is an application on HackerOne. HackerOne is a platform where you can pay people to find bugs in your software, or if you're a bug bounty hunter, you can get paid to find vulnerabilities. Now, he's been running into issues with HackerOne, and you can guess it's all because of AI. Now, before we continue, a good way to keep yourself safe online is to stay ahead of what hackers are doing. And one of the best ways to do that is to use today's video sponsor, Flare. Flare is a threat exposure management platform that can let you know if you or your company's private data, like credentials and documents, have been exposed or stolen by black hat hackers. Flare has one of the biggest comprehensive collections of events on the internet to include things like illicit chats, information from the dark web, as well as a ton of hacker forms. As an exploit developer and security engineer, one of of my favorite things to do on Flare is to go and search through the illicit chats to search for zero days. Here we can see the content of a chat where someone is offering a zero day sale for Qtox. Now Qtox is a secure messenger and apparently this actor has a zero day. They're trying to sell four Qtox. It's very recent. This happened like last week. There isn't a CVE associated with this exploit, but it may be important if you actively use this software. And the events in Flare aren't static. Flare is adding new sources of information to figure out if you've been hacked every month. Just last month, they added all of these sources here with over 15 million events being collected per day. Guys, the best way to help the channel is to go and interact with the sponsor. If you use this link here, you can get a free trial to use Flare. Go see what you can find. Thanks again, Flare, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Now, Daniel Stenberg has made it very clear that he is not a big fan of AI, rightfully so. I think AI has some positives, but also a fair amount of negatives when it comes to society as a whole. And his issue is this thing we've actually talked about before in a previous video, the trend of AI bug reports, okay? Now, AI bug reports are a huge issue because in 2025, a trend that is increasing, there have been way more AI slop bug reports. About 20% of all submissions so far are bug reports that are AI slop. What is an AI slop bug report? How does that make, what, what makes something an AI slop bug report? An AI slop bug report, according to Daniel, is a bug report that reports a vulnerability that does not actually exist. And you may be thinking, well, isn't the whole point of submitting a bug to figure out if the bug is or is not real? Like, isn't this the whole purpose of the process? Well, sort of, right? If you submit a bug to HackerOne, it is assumed that you have triaged the bug locally. You have confirmed that the code path that you say is vulnerable is vulnerable by default in the software. You're making sure that it is worth the curl maintainer's time to look at this vulnerability and to patch it and to pay you if you found a real bug. Now here's where AI bug reports get really friggin' gross in my opinion. You will see that if you read that th this bug report, right, the tool debug callback function can write large amounts of debug data to a log file with this flag, the section writes raw headers to the header stream, and this is gonna be used to do a denial of service, right? That all sounds well and good. But the problem here is that to determine if it's well and good, you have to read the bug report. You have to go into the code and read the code and figure out if it's actually like a reliable way to attack the software and if it actually matters to the maintainers. Now, some of these aren't that bad, right? Some of these are people getting things wrong. They're using AI to do tool analysis, but the AI isn't like misreporting. This one is where I think Daniel started to lose his marbles a little bit. This was uh, reported on July 9th of 2025. This is a supposed use after free vulnerability in libcurl. Use after free is a very common, unfortunately, but very bad memory corruption vulnerability where if you have a chunk of memory that's allocated and you free it, if you continue to use it, you can cause things like type confusion and other memory corruption states that allow you to exploit the software. A remote attacker that's serving you a response into curl could exploit a use after free to hack into your computer. Not a great place to be. If this were real, right? If, if this vulnerability actually existed, uh, you will see really quickly, um, hmm. So they reported on this snippet of code here that if you read Daniel's response, SSL get X data is used exactly zero times in the libcurl code, okay? So what happened? This supposed security researcher asked AI most likely to find bugs in curl to write a report on it, and then he just took that and submitted it to HackerOne. The issue here is that the, 
the AI <laughs> hallucinated the use of code in libcurl such that like this 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 code path that he's reporting on where the bug exists doesn't actually get called. It doesn't run. And now you may be asking, why is this a big deal? Who cares, right? Why, who cares if we submit bad bug reports, right? Isn't that Daniel's job to go into the bug reports and figure out if they are or are not true? Well, this is what Daniel goes into in his report here, right? His blog post. The curl security team consists of seven team members. I encourage the others to also chime in and back me up so that we act right in each case. Every report thus engages three to four persons, perhaps for 30 minutes up to sometimes an hour or three each. This is for every single bug report that is submitted. And again, if these bug reports had actual vulnerabilities, this is a great thing for the open source community, right? You get software that is now more secure. Daniel has in theory less bugs to worry about because more have been found. This is a good thing if the bugs are real. If you are inundated with supposedly 80% reporting that is all made up by AI, we are witnessing literally a, as he says, a death by a thousand slops, a denial of service of human resources through the use of AI slop. Now I do wanna play devil's advocate here, okay? There definitely is a world that is coming and I don't know when it's coming and I don't know when, like how, what, how it's gonna impact the community, but there is a world where vulnerabilities can be found by AI. Sean Heelan, another huge, very, very smart security researcher, wrote an article where he used O3 to find a remote zero day in Linux's uh, SMB implementation, okay? So again, this is another person that is using AI correctly in this case to find zero days. The difference between Sean and these other researchers is Sean is not submitting every single report that the AI comes up with to the Linux kernel's uh, you know, Git repo for issues because that would inundate the kernel team. The reason why that would be bad is because the signal to noise ratio, which means the number of actual bugs that were found versus bugs that were fake that the, that the AI hallucinated was about 2% meaning of the 100 reports he had to go through, the AI made up 98 of them. Now again, O3 did find a zero day CBE 2025, uh, this, this one, that number here, I read this on stream a couple days ago. Uh, it found a zero day vulnerability that was a use after free in the SMB handler for Linux, which just like in Windows for some reason, the SMB handler is in the kernel, I don't know why that's a thing, uh, but that's the case, right? Now I'm a security researcher, this is my day job. I literally do the kind of stuff here that Sean Heelan does as my day job, I get paid to hack, right? I have been instructed to try to use AI in more of my workflows and I think it is a good way to buy down time. I don't think AI is 100% bad like some of the doomers, a doomer that I used to be by the way, are necessarily reporting. However, the world of using AI to do vulnerability research takes an extremely seasoned and knowledgeable researcher to use it effectively. Because as this report indicates here, they find the vulnerability in the case that he already found a bug and had to refind it in one out of a hundred runs. What that is saying is that there are 99 in this scenario bug reports that are fake. They probably sound really good because AI is really good at bullshitting and now a researcher has to go through and validate those findings. And that is the exact problem that Daniel and his team are dealing with. They are being treated as the, hey, I don't know if this is real, can you go fucking deal with it please, right? In my personal research, by the way, I have literally had AI look at a code base, make up a API that does not exist in that code base, make up a fake snippet of code in that API, and then report to me a vulnerability in that fake snippet of code and write a full report on a use after free that is that is in an API that doesn't exist. Like this stuff is so interesting and so sexy in theory if it worked, but we're not there yet. Now, for ways forward, there are some things that uh, Daniel and his team have encouraged HackerOne to do. First of all, you can submit AI found bugs, but you have to disclose that they are generated or at least assisted by AI. They do this to immediately filter out like, hey, how much time do we spend on triaging this vulnerability? Should we give it our full heart? Um, two, they are considering making it so that you are not able to submit bug reports unless you are a high reputation person on HackerOne. That does solve the problem immediately in the short term, but I think it does make the nature or the world of bug bounty harder to get into, and I think is a net negative for the community, but I mean, to the benefit of the maintainers, which is who needs to be protected in the first place, right? Like this, this is a problem that has to be solved, and if that solves it, then unfortunately there may be a path forward. And then also, there are some suggestions of, okay, now every submission of a bug to HackerOne costs you money, you gotta pay $15 to submit a bug, 
thus de-incentivizing fake bugs. And then if you get the bounty, they give you your money back, or at least so they can find that it's not an AI bug. Anyway, here are all the vulnerabilities that have been reported to curl that again, they have to go through in triage. All of these are made up AI generated nonsense. Not a great place to be for the world of software security. I hope we find a solution to this. So take away from this guys, if you're new here, if you're, you know, maybe in this community doing bug bounty stuff, please, please use AI, use AI in your code, use AI in your, in your dev tools, use AI in your process, but you have to be the final source of truth. You have to be the one that's holding the band hammer that says like, hey, I'm choosing to submit this because I have verified it and I can confirm that it's real. I'm not just gonna let 03 or 04 or 05.2, whatever, tell me what to do and then submit that to Daniel and his team for them to be sad and you know have more work to do that doesn't actually do anything. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you're new here, hit that sub button. I make these videos at least twice a week and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, goodbye.